So here's a review of the SV Boni SV48P achromatic refractor. What is it? Well, it's a 90 mm f5.5 refractor with a 500 mm focal length. I have been getting a lot of requests to review this model. These are coming from both beginners and advanced astronomers alike. So SV Boni is a company that seems to be wanting to sell you everything you want and need for astronomy at ridiculously low prices. <laughs> I have some of their plates and rings and adapters, but I've never actually seen some of their optics. I know that their eyepieces, for example, are popular with budget seekers. This entire telescope is an optical tube only, but you can get it on Amazon for $299. But at the time that I looked at the ad, there was a box that you could check that would give you an instant $100 discount for a price of $199 shipped. I couldn't resist. I bought one. <laughs> now the marketing for this thing is, well, let's call it interesting. It's billed as an astrophotography telescope. I think they're probably overselling that. It does come with a cradle and a Vixen compatible dovetail plate, which is referred to in the advertisement as hoops. <laughs> and in another part of the advertisement, there's a thing pointing to the Vixen compatible plate, and it's also referred to as a hoop. <laughs> it's got a rack and pinion focuser, and the rack and pinion is referred to as toothed. Well, okay, maybe we can forgive marketing. Let's take a look and see how this thing performs. The initial impression of this thing is very good. I don't know how much of this is coming across on video, but the construction quality is just really, really nice. I mean, there's nice paint here, nice finish, and got a metal lens cap with a retractable dew shield. The coatings look very nice here like this. And we've got a cradle ring assembly. Now, one cork here, this looks like hinged rings it's not, it, it's just, you loosen these bolts and it's actually a solid piece of aluminum. And if you wanna change rings, these things actually don't come off without you removing the visual back. And I'm not gonna do that. So that's a little bit of a cork here. We've got a Vixen compatible dovetail plate down here. This is a quarter inch by 20 threaded hole here that you can use for a tripod. This spacing is odd as are these bolts. So that is a situation that I had to contend with here to get another plate on here. And I had to do that because I can't take the rings off. <laughs> We've got a finder bracket here. This is a standard finder bracket that you'll see. You can put anything on here. If you've got an optical finder, you can put that on there like this. Or if you would prefer a red dot reflex sight, you know, this goes on here as well. Some people say this looks like a large or slightly larger Orion short tube 80. And I don't know if this is coming across again on video, but this is a short tube 80. This is a far better constructed product than this. There's nothing wrong with the short tube 80, but this is just on another level. We come to the back here and things apparently get even better. The focuser looks quite nice. It is a two speed, this, and this is a 10 to one reduction and it is rotatable. You can actually rotate this focuser and you can go, if you want to, inch and a quarter like this. I'll go ahead and demonstrate this, put a diagonal here. And these are compression rings, by the way. These aren't just simple set screws. Put an eyepiece like that if you want to go inch and a quarter. Don't want to go inch and a quarter, this comes out. And this is a, a two inch focuser like this. And yes, I mean, you could, Go wide field if this is your this is your pleasure. And you can see at the bottom all sorts of adjustments that you see on much more expensive focusers, including the rack and pinion here, which the advertisements refer to as a toothed focuser. Okay, do we have a problem here? Yes, we do. And if you've been paying attention when I was moving stuff in and out, the focuser has an enormous amount of play in it. If you look at Amazon reviews, there is almost universal complaints about this. Now, I normally don't place a lot of stock in Amazon reviews, but some of these people do seem to know what they're talking about. And one of them did suggest that these two adjustments here, if you tighten these a little bit, and you have to be careful how you do this because if you tighten this too much, you know, it, you could take 
and make this actually a little bit too stiff. But if you do this, see that it, it, there is still a little play in here and I've gone back and forth and I played with this adjustment a little bit and I think I've got it to the point where it's kind of in a sweet spot where it, there is no play, but it's not so stiff that you can't move the focuser. So I don't know if you order one of these, if yours isn't gonna be adjustable the way this is, but this one I was able to take the play out of it. And once I did this, it is really, really nice. Okay, so I do wanna stress here again, what you're buying is an optical tube only. The rest of this is on you. The finder, the diagonal, and the eyepiece. And I find that beginners have a tendency to perhaps over obsess a little bit about the eyepiece. Yes, it is important what you look through, but what you really should be obsessing over is the mount. <laughs> now, I find a lot of beginners, they undermount their telescopes and then the things jiggle around and it's hard to see and then sometimes they just give up. Now, there's several options available to you. You could use a standard photographic tripod. This is not ideal, but it will get you by until you get something else. The plate has a quarter inch by 20 threaded hole at the bottom, and I have threaded this bogan plate on top of it. And as you can see, you can do this, and you have a pan or fluid head or whatever. If you have a head like this one, you can do this and move it around. Now this may look kind of solid to you when you're standing here, but it's actually not that great. You need a tripod that will not only hold the thing very steady, but be able to pan very smoothly across the sky to follow the rotation of the Earth. So the mount that you use actually has to do two contradictory things. It has to be very solid and very easily movable. Now, a better thing to do is to use a telescope-specific mount, and I've got two of them here. One of this, this, this one in the middle here, is called an alt as mount. That's a fancy term that just says it moves left and right and up and down. And this is a Vixen-compatible plate. This is an industry standard. That is a saddle that goes with it. And tighten down on the plate. And it may seem to the naked eye that this is about as stable as this tripod, but it's actually much better. Move this out of the way. It's actually much better. It's designed to pan smoothly across the sky. And you can put slow motion controls on here and do this. This is a Vixen Porta. They don't make this anymore. I have lamented in the past that the industry doesn't make quality, low cost Altaz mounts before. Hopefully these will come back and you can find these things used. Now, if you really wanted to get full functionality, you can use one of these. This is an equatorial mount. This is my Celestron AVX, and some of you may have seen this here. I've used this several times before, and you have the full benefit of tracking and go to. There's a computer here. It'll go to whatever you want it to see. Now, what can you see with a telescope like this? Well, the moon is an obvious target. It's very good. You can see craters on the moon. It's a lot to look at, and it's quite exciting. Boost the magnification a little bit and you can see Jupiter, the bands across Jupiter. You can see moons shuttling back and forth. And in times of good seeing when the moon moves in front of the planet, you can see a little black dot that's cast on the surface of the planet of itself. It's quite exciting to look at. When it's up, you can see Saturn. You can see Saturn's rings and you can also see Titan, the largest moon just off the rings itself. For deep sky, many of the showpiece objects look quite good. The Pleiades, the Orion Nebula, the Andromeda Galaxy, and many other objects. How are the optics on this thing? Pretty good, actually. I didn't have anything really to complain about. If you're a geek, their optics are slightly undercorrected, and they may be slightly pinched as well. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. It's fine for an optical tube at this price point. The telescope does have chromatic aberration, which you would expect from an inexpensive achromat. It shows up as a purple halo around bright objects. This cannot be helped. If you don't like to see those purple halos, you have to get something called an apochromatic refractor. And, well, don't look up what those things cost. Of course, they advertise this thing as an astrophotography tool, so let's give it a shot. We have the optical tube here. This is my Hutec modded EOS 5D. It's been modified for astrophotography. Teleview field flattener, the Celestron AVX mount, and an STI auto guider. Now because of the strange spacing and hardware on the rings, the metal hoops, <laughs> it took a little while to get a plate adapted to this thing. Those hex screws were really tiny. That took a little bit longer than I would have liked, so be careful if you're planning to do that. 
Well, so, okay, I've said this many times before, but astrophotography is quite difficult. Notice this optical tube only costs $199, but I had to surround it with almost $4,000 worth of gear just to get this up and running, and I haven't taken a single picture yet. If we were out at night, you would see a small stand with a laptop on it running PhD2. Astrophotography was built for Murphy's Law. What can go wrong will go wrong. And if any one of these items fails or stops working or even kind of stops working for a little while, your images will be ruined. Well, okay, I wanted to give this thing the best shot that I could to take some images, so I went out and I took this image of the Orion Nebula. Now I took 60 frames, some at 5 seconds, some at 15, and some at 25 seconds, hoping that PixInsight would sort of sort out the bodies with the HDR. And you can see, of course, there are bright purple halos around the brighter stars that is unavoidable in an acromat. You'll notice there's also that weird ring of light in the lower left-hand corner. That's not from the field flattener. I've used this Teleview field flattener many times, and it's fine. This is the only time it's ever done that. So it's something to do with some flaring inside the optical tube. Again, at this price, I'm not faulting this telescope in any way. That is acceptable for a $199 optical tube. Other than that, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, that might actually keep you happy for a while. If you're good at post-processing, you can, of course, mask off those stars and then work on them and then put them back in if you're good in Photoshop or if you're really good in PixInsight. I also took this image of the Horsehead Nebula. And again, it doesn't look too bad. There's some little weirdness going on there. I don't know what those flares are on the bright stars coming out. And also on an acromat, typically stars aren't pure white. They tend to be a little bit yellow because not all of the colors are staying put. But again, not too bad for something of this price range. You know, normally when I do these reviews, I have seen multiple samples of whatever it is that I'm reviewing, and I can kind of give you an idea for trends and things to look out for. In this particular model, this is the only one of these that I've ever seen. So I was able to take the play out of the focuser on this one. Maybe that would happen in the one that you get, or maybe you can't adjust the focuser. I can't tell. It appears from the Amazon reviews that most people were able to adjust their focusers so that they worked. Now, that is a sticking point for me giving an unqualified recommendation here. I just don't know what the quality control is. Okay, do we have any other options in this price range? Yes, we have a couple. One is the old standby, the Orion Short Tube 80. The thing's been around forever. It goes in and out of the Orion catalog. Right now it seems to be out again, but maybe it'll come back or maybe you can find a used sample. It's about the same price as this thing. However, this has a much higher ceiling, I think, than the Orion Short Tube 80, mostly because of, ironically, the focuser. <laughs> if you can get yours adjusted the way I have here, yes, I would prefer this product to the Orion Short Tube 80. The other one is my new favorite budget scope, the Orion Observer 134. I'll leave a link in the description below. That's a complete telescope for $249. You get the mount, the eyepieces, the finder. There is nothing more that you have to buy. So for myself, for the price that I paid for this, I can tell you I am very happy with my purchase. As for you, well, it's your move. Hopefully I've given you enough information to decide if you want to buy one of these things. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.